Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name's Chris Calabocas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation, startups, the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcast. I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. So my company name was called Hello Future. And I recently pivoted and changed the name of my company to ID8 Plus Execute or ID8 and Execute. And the reason why I did this was twofold. First of all, I wanted to focus more on the specific tasks that I was helping companies with. I was helping them with ideation and execution, coming up with new innovative product ideas and executing those new innovative product ideas, right? The previous company name, Hello Future, had a great, I mean, I love that name. I think that's a great name because it's welcoming the future. And that's pretty much what I do is I try to welcome the future. But the thing is that for a lot of people, that's not a practical thing especially in these hard times, we need practicality. We need exactitude. We need things to match up. So this is one of the reasons why I changed the name to ideate and execute because there's ideation and execution. And part of ideation is looking into the future, trying to decide what's next, what your customer is looking for, basically product innovation. What kinds of products and services is your customer looking for to help improve their lives. And a lot of times, one of the reasons why startups don't aren't successful because there's a disconnect between what the startup is providing and what the market wants. Product market fit, everyone's heard of this. And that's one of the reasons why we create MVPs or we encourage companies and startups to use the MVP method or the minimum viable product to get a product out the door. And I've talked about this before when I talked about the PopSocket story where the guy who invented PopSockets, he originally had two PopSockets on the back of the phone and he was using it to tie his earbud cords. Now everyone has headphones with no ear, with no cables. So what was gonna happen? Well, he gave it out to a bunch of his friends and they, instead of using it as something to tie their ear pods on or their earphones on, they used it as a stand and for as a handle. And he pivoted and turned it into a standard handle, and now it is the unbelievable success that it is today. You've seen pop sockets, they're everywhere, and they're not cheap. But I digress. So you see, he had an original idea which he thought people would love, but only when it hit the market and the market said, no, we'd like to use this for something else, did it become a raving success. And that's what happened with Twitter too. Twitter was just a service that allowed podcasters to tell their listeners that, hey, there's a new show. Here's a new show. And now it's turned into the, the biggest real-time news reporting media organization in the world. If something's breaking, if something's news, where is it? It's on Twitter. So Twitter pivoted to meet the demands of the market. Product innovation. What do people want? Now, here's one of the things I had a, I've been talking about for a really, really long time because I'm sick and tired of all of the sales messages that I get from on the internet. I mean, you probably are too. You probably get tons of spam. You probably get phone calls. You probably get all sorts of sales messages telling you buy, 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 buy. And some of them are accurate. Some of them are very, very accurate. They'll say, oh, this guy was interested in going to Italy. Let's let's slip him an ad on flying to Italy. And it's it might be so compelling that you'll click on it and go, yes, this is great. But sometimes the targeting is terrible and they'll send you something that you're not interested in. In fact, most of the time, that's what it is. Don't they say that 90% of email traffic on the internet is spam? Basically people sending out sales messages going, buy, 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 and people just ignoring it. So I have an issue with this sort of thing because it seems to me as an engineer inefficient, right? Because we have people who want things and people who sell things. And we have the people who want things and the people who sell things. And the people who sell things are constantly screaming out, 
buy this, buy this, buy this. And the people who want things are going, shut up, I will tell you when I want something. They're just getting inundated with sales messages. This is most of the internet, sales messages. So when I talk to people about this, I said, what we need is a demand engine. We already have a supply engine. There's so much supply out there. There's people selling many versions of the exact same thing, all clamoring for your attention. Pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. We've realized you have a problem and we can solve it. So pick me of all the solutions that are out there. That is what most of the internet is. Most of the messages you see on the internet are sales messages. But what about the poor consumer? The poor consumer who just wants a specific thing when they want it, right? So basically what's happening now is the poor consumer doesn't have a lot of desires all the time, but then they have a, a desire at a certain moment where they really want something, where they really want to make a purchase. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we had some kind of a system that would be able to take the consumer's request at the moment they want it and then ask for sales messages at that moment for that delivery in the right place, at the right time, at the right price, yada, yada, yada. A pure matching of supply and demand. I mean, isn't that what databases do? Isn't that what AIs can do? They can do matching unbelievably well. But then what happened? I suggested this to a bunch of people and they said to me, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Chris? Consumers don't know what they want. And then I realized it's the same thing Henry Ford said. It's the same thing Steve Jobs said. Consumers don't really know what we what they want. We want them to be told. We want we they need to be told what they want. They need to we need to synthesize something for them and give it to them. And the reality is actually somewhere in between. There's things that the consumer wants and there's things that the seller wants. The seller wants to sell as many of their products as possible, but they also should only be selling products to people who want them, right? So you think that there'd be some way we could figure that out. But if people don't generally know what they want, then how do we figure that out? And the only way is to get it out there, is to create that product and this is why we create MVPs create the minimum viable product even something that looks embarrassing but at least it solves the problem for the consumer it solves the problem for the consumer and then get it out into their hands have them try it and test it and decide will I pay for this is this worth my time to pay for this. And that is the essence of product innovation, creating new products, new services that people will want. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.